Lord, may God just do. Give five minutes of our time to you, Lord. Lord, by your speaking, my God, will you listen? I pray, my God, you use me, Lord, to bow the peace this night, speak through me and to me. Amen. I pray, my God, Lord, this night, my God, once again, not just for ears to listen, but a heart to receive your word. Lord, I pray, my God, Lord, that you would have said what you want said in this place. I pray, my God, Lord, that you would challenge our hearts, my God. Change people's lives, my God, in this place like that. In Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, I know many of you probably heard the gospel preached, and um, you'll, you'll hear the gospel again tonight. But I want to share something as well. So I want to share something for for the believer, and also for for those of you that have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. So whatever side of the fence you're on tonight, the Word of God is for you, Amen. amen. Glory to God. So if you turn the Bibles with me to Matthew, look at Matthew chapter 21. If you've got a Bible, if you haven't, if you haven't believe me, trust me that it is written in God's Word. I'm not making it up. I'm not good enough to make it up. I'm not clever enough to make it up. And we'll read from verse He left them and went out of the city to Bethany, where he spent the night. Early in the morning, as he was on his way back to the city, he was hungry. Seeing a fig tree by the road, he went up to it, but found nothing on it except leaves. Then he said to it, May you never bear fruit again. Immediately the tree with them. When his disciples saw this, they were amazed. How did the fig tree wither so quickly, they asked. And Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, if you have faith and do not doubt, not only can you do what was done to the fig tree, but also you can say to this mountain, go and throw yourself into the sea. And it will be done. If you believe, you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. Now, um, just quickly, a bit of the background. Uh, I was reading through the, the story of, of Jesus' ministry. I've been reading through it. Uh, not so much study, but just reading through it in my own time. And it's not. Not far after Jesus cleared the temple, you've heard that story, ever. You've heard of him when he, he came into the temple areas. The people were trading, exchanging money, selling doves, and he, he overturned the table. You, you, you know, you're familiar with that story because he said that, you know, um, you, you're, making, you're making my father's house into a house of thieves, a house of robbers. Now, if you like, look at it in this way. It says that he spent the night in Bethany and then he got up in the morning to went back to the city. And when he was on his way, he was hungry. He saw the fig tree by the road. He went up to it and found nothing on it except leaves. Now, maybe, just maybe, that the, the cursing of the fig tree probably would have come on the back of how he felt towards the people the day before. Because Jesus didn't take it lightly when people were showing contempt towards God, shall we say. Right? But what I want to tell you tonight is this. When Jesus saw the tree, when he was hungry, he saw the tree. Now, he wouldn't have went up to that tree if he didn't think that he could get some food figs from that tree. Yes or no? So, so let's put ourselves in the picture. If we're hungry and you're walking along um, and you see a fruit tree, you've got to go up expecting to pick fruit, aren't you? 
that's what he done. He went up to the tree and he was expecting to pick some figs from the tree to satisfy his hunger, to, 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 to have some food, if you like. Now, this is what I've been looking at for a little while. Not to so much do a Bible study on it, but just to preach to my own life. To preach to my own heart tonight. That some Christians, they have a, a leafy lifestyle, but no, no substance, no fruit there. And that's exactly what this tree was. It was all leaves. It was all a good appearance. But there was nothing there of any value. Nothing there of any substance. But, you know, in the Bible this is referred to, in, the, in, in, in this part of Israel, this is referred to as the hypocritical tree. Because it looked more than what it was. I want you to follow me just for a few minutes tonight because I want to speak to every believer in this place. What God is pleased with and what we are pleased with. Sometimes we are only too happy to look the part. But when you scratch the surface, there's nothing there. God's not happy with people who look the part. I was listening to a thing on the, on the phone the other day. And the man was saying about walking the talk. Walking the talk. And what that means simply means is this. Doing what you say you're going to do. So if I say that I'm a Christian, then I want to walk as a Christian. Now, for Jesus to go up to this tree and expect fruit but to find nothing there, I believe he was disappointed. Do you? I believe he was disappointed. How disappointed does he get sometimes when he looks at us? And all we have is just a big leafy lifestyle. Nice big branches, stand nice and tall, full of leaves, but nothing there. When he gets closer, when he inspects our life, nothing there. And sometimes a Christian can be like that. A Christian can have this big, nice, uh, external appearance, but nothing there of any value. No fruit. No fruit. Just a, just a, basically all it is, just a, an outward appearance. Have you ever cracked a nut open and been nothing in it? How disappointing are you? Come on. No. When you're cracking that open and there's nothing inside the shell, disappointed. No. One, you're disappointed because you, you, know, you spent all that time trying to crack the nut open. And two, because you can't eat nothing because it's just fresh air inside the shell. Sometimes, and only sometimes, that's how the Christian can be. Just an empty shell. The, ex the exterior is good. The outward appearance looks good, just like the tree. Everything can look good. But when Jesus starts to search, what will he find? What will he find? And listen, it has to be, for me and you, it has to be a warning tonight. We need to take it as a warning that, listen, we're getting the opportunity, aren't we, to produce fruit. The Bible says, produce fruit in keeping with repentance. Okay, so I'm going to get to repentance in a minute. I'm going to get in a, in a minute, I'm going to get to the, you know, to, 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 to the good part. Yeah, but the Bible says that we need to keep, we need to produce fruit in keeping with that repentance. In other words, not to just, oh, say a prayer and that's it, we're a Christian. But no, there has to be more than leaves on the tree. Are you with me tonight? Amen. I know it's Sunday, I know you've had a big dinner, but please give me two more minutes. We need to be more than just a, a leaf on a tree. There has to be some kind of fruit there. Bear fruit in keeping with repentance. And you see, we can't just repent, we can't just give our life to, to Jesus and expect everything to be done for us. That's where so many people, unfortunately, and it's sad to see, but it really is out of our hands, but that's where so many people miss the mark. So many people that, oh yeah, you know what, I'm going to go and give my life to the Lord, I'm going to get saved and... And, you know, they, they repent, they come before the Lord, they receive the Lord. Pretty much goes in line with what was, was preached last week. You know, the, the, the seeds that fell on those shallow places. We receive the Lord sometimes with joy in our hearts. But that's all there, there is there. There's, there's no producing any fruit. Everyone, some, the people sometimes expect everything to be done for them. 
We have to produce fruit of a believer. We have to produce fruit that's in keeping with our repentance. And that is the fruit of Jesus Christ. When he looks at me and you, he desires to see fruit. He desires to see more than leaves. He desires for there to be something inside the shell. Are you with me tonight? Amen. He desires for there, to, there to be more there than just this external appearance of a Christian. And let me tell you something. He's not wrong for desiring that. Surely he deserves that, doesn't he? He deserves for there to be more than just a, a, you know, an appearance. But he deserves for there to be fruit in our lives, producing fruit in keeping with repentance, in keeping with, with what God has done for us. The Bible says we've been bought at a price. Me and you, we've been bought at a price. That, you know, we no longer live to ourselves, but we live to God. <coughs> to live to God is to live for God. To live for God is to live against ourselves. <coughs> you see, if we truly want to live for God, we'll produce the fruit of God. Why? Because God will be number one. God will be what we're taking in. When we're taking in God, what will we produce? The things of God. <coughs> you know what? I was reading it through, and it says there that um, he went up to it, he found nothing on it except leaves. Then he said to it, may you never bear fruit again. <coughs> Sorry. And immediately, the tree died. When the disciples saw this, they were amazed. How did the fig tree wither? So quickly they asked. You see, people look at the Alps Albert. Do we think that? Yeah. yeah. <coughs> people look at the outward appearance. What does God look at? The inside. God looks at what people can't see. The reason why the disciples were amazed is because they didn't exactly know what God desired. They were struggling to come to terms with many things that Jesus done. But he said, may you never bear fruit again. And let me tell you something. I don't want to be that kind of tree that's only full of leaves and has no fruit because there may be a day when God will say, you know what? You've had your chance. Time and time again, you've had your chance and you're bearing no fruit. We need to bear fruit for Jesus Christ. Do you agree with that? Amen. Glory to God. You know, if you're not a Christian in these nine, just give me two, one, one more minute and then I'll finish. Give me one more minute of your time. If you're not a Christian. You've probably been to church many, many times. You've probably heard the gospel preached a dozen times. You know, maybe, I don't know, maybe in your own heart you probably even said a prayer. But I want to tell you this here. Simple. Plain, as plain and as simple as I can possibly say it, I want to tell you this here. Saying a prayer doesn't save anybody. But giving your life to Jesus Christ saves you. The Bible says that we have to call upon the Lord. And whoever calls upon the Lord, the Bible says, will be saved. But you see, we can't call upon the Lord unless first we acknowledge Jesus as our Saviour, as our Lord, as our Master. We can't acknowledge, we, we, we can't call upon the Lord unless first we realise the condition that our life is in. A lot of people that look at this portion of the scripture that I've shared tonight and they, and they say, oh well, you know, it's the same as when the Lord wants to have fellowship with me and you. Listen. There's plenty of scriptures for fellowship, 
the Lord used this here as a per for a purpose to speak directly to the disciples. Regardless of whether, whether he was hungry or not, regardless of whether he wanted fellowship or not, whether, regardless of, 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 his, of his reasoning, he saw that there was nothing there, he cursed the tree, it caused the people to question him. And it's the same for me and you tonight. It's the same in this place if you're not a Christian in here tonight. Whatever the Lord does, it causes people to question him. But let me tell you this, he knows exactly what he's doing. We don't. We question God, we complicate things, we want to come to God on our terms, or what about this, what about that, if buts and maybes. Let me tell you this here. Me and you, the Bible says that we're promised life and life to the full. I'm going to be accepted. In order to accept that, we have to be willing to bear fruit for Jesus Christ. We have to be, be willing to be more than just a tree with leaves and branches. Are you with me? We have to be willing to be more. If you want to accept that new life in Jesus Christ, if you want to accept Jesus, if you want Jesus, sorry, to accept you, to be acceptable to the Lord, then you have to be more than just leaves and branches. You have to bear fruit. The only way you can bear fruit is once you've accepted him as your Lord and Saviour. Now, I don't know where you are tonight. I don't know what side of the fence you're on. Maybe you are bearing fruit. I thank God for that. But maybe, just like me, so many times you could just be a load of leaves. A load of leaves. Maybe you don't know the Lord as your Saviour. Maybe you've been to church. Maybe, I don't know, maybe you think you are saved. And, you know, coming down here and saying a prayer with a man doesn't make you saved. Maybe you think you are saved. But listen, that's between you and God. But what about from tonight onwards? Produce fruit or produce leaves? What do you want to do? Do you want to produce the fruit that's pleasing to God? Or just be a load of leaves on a tree? Just a load of leaves stays not pleasing to So it's down to you. It's your call. I'll leave it with you. You listen, you've heard the, about the death, burial and resurrection. We, we, we're all too familiar with it now. You know the minute that a man stands up here and starts saying about sin, separation from God and the death of the birth. Do you know where most people's ears switch off because they've heard it too many times before? Well, I've got more of a message for you tonight. I've got more of a message. Yes, we know God is love. We know that God loved the world so much he sent his son to the cross. We know all these things. We know all of them. I've got more of a message for you. Stop being on the other tree and start producing fruit. Stop just being an empty shell. An empty nut. It's not pleasing to God, you know, church. It's not pleasing. He's not happy with it. See where you are. People playing games with God. Using God on, on their terms. Happy to be a Christian when it suits them. There comes a day when the Lord walks along and he looks at me and you. Let me have, let me go and examine this tree. Let me go and let me go up to this tree and see what's there. And that could be today for me and you. God could come along and could examine our life. And all he sees is someone playing games. All he sees is someone half-heartedly. Someone who, who's, who, who wants God on their terms when it's convenient for them. No, it doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. Either you're all in or you're all out. Where do you want to be? That's the question to you. You're either all in or you're all out. Now, I'm not saying that this here tonight to, to, to win any fans. I don't want any fans. Ministry is a very lonely place anyway. It's not one friend do I have. Don't want any friends, don't want any fans, don't really necessarily want people to like me and pat me on the back and say, oh, he's a good old boy. I want to tell you the way it is, how God sees it. If you're not producing fruit of the believer, then God's not happy. God's not happy. Check where you are, see where you are. Put it right. Do something about it while God gives you a chance. Amen. Put it right. Do something about it tonight. We're going to sing a song. Too many people that come in the church and they get up and they go out. Can't wait for Monday morning to come. When they think, oh, you know what, I've got me in the church. I've had my church this weekend. Now I can go and carry on the way I want to. Just leaves. Just empty shell. That's it. 
Anybody who looked like a Christian. The Bible says that Satan masquerades his name to a point. Anyone who looked like a Christian. But what's really there? What's really there? That's the question to answer you. What's really there? Let's just bow our heads.